Welcome back to the channel. You saw the intro, so you know what this video is going to be about. So I'm gonna be pretty straightforward with you all. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you one simple thing, and it is energy and dynamics. So the thing is, is that you just don't understand how to properly manage energy and dynamics in the track. And because of that, you lack that groove and pump in the track. And to give you an example, when I was playing my music in the past, so when I was DJing, it just sounded horrible. Like it just sounded horrible. This is an example. So you can hear uh, a distorted bass, like it doesn't give you that groove, that pump, just doesn't work in simple words. And for that chill it yet to the for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. If you're interested in coaching and you want to work with me on your music, you want to start releasing music, just like put out stuff that you're proud of yourself, play it in the club, make sure that it sounds good. All the links are down below. Feel free to book a call with me. Uh, I'd be happy to have a chat with you and see uh, how we can uh, work together. And without further talking, let's get started with the video. You don't understand dynamics and energy flow uh, in the track and it's okay like it's okay i was there just about like a couple of months ago so you know so this is why i'm making this video because that was like an aha like kind of like a breakthrough moment for me so i want to show you the same track you've heard it in the intro but i want to show you the same track uh how it sounded when um i just made it it's like in 2022 uh and just just compare the sound and how it feels how it makes you feel right so let's listen from around here <laughs> So this is the old mix. Now, just one more time, this is the new one. And it's like day and night difference. I'm still mixing, but you can feel how much better this version sounds. You have the groove, you have the pump, you can define all the instruments. It's really easy to hear everything that you have in the track, right? So I was able to get such a sound when I understood this. So now uh, it's physics time, really. Like I wouldn't think that physics would be useful in my life like what i learned in school but it's, it's actually not useful at all it's more like just understanding the basics and basics like you can learn yourself uh but let me give you two examples so uh in the track that i have uh my base is sustained right these two bases have very very different energy right and depending on how your base goes uh, you will write your melodies, your chords, your pads, like drums and everything because bass is a foundation of a track. So step one to properly understanding and managing dynamics and energy flow in your track is understand the energy of your bass. So in this example, if you just listen to the bass, right, it's... it's... <laughs> You can 
instantly feel that it's like, you know, it's how to say like, it sounds like a little bit like an offbeat hat, even though it's sustained, but because I have a lot of side chain. So now with the drums, you can really feel how the bass would sound. <laughs> So that's the thing, right? And depending on what kind of bass you have, you will do all the next steps. So now uh, let's talk about the meatiest part of this video. So what you can see in this diagram is really, really simple. So you can see that we are riding the wave of the bass. The lead supports the energy flow. This way, all the sounds reinforce each other creating a solid groove, right? So what you want to have in your track is uh, the bass, right? As the main sound. And then all the additional sounds, like the leads, the plugs, everything should like ride the wave. It should support the bass. Like you don't want to go against the bass, right? And this is what, uh, like including myself just like a couple of months ago, this is what people get wrong. So they add like a bunch of sounds to their tracks and it doesn't work, right? If I just play you the lead sound just with the bass, you can see that they just, they just work. <laughs> they just work with each other and that's it. And we can, we can do like this. I'm gonna put a filter on my bass line and this is how it's gonna sound. Just so you can get a taste of it. So we can do like this. So you can really hear that all the notes that I have on my lead sounds, they go with the bass, right? So you want to ride the wave of the bass. I know I'm, I'm repeating myself, but again, if you have uh, a rolling bass line, then it would make a bit more sense to have like short and plucky notes, right? This is one of like very, very important concepts. And this is the whole idea of the video. So what's going to happen when you're going to start adding sounds is when you keep adding more and more sounds at some point, the mix becomes too busy. The problem is that now we don't have the space for the bass to breathe. Like I, I like this word breathe because it really, you know, for me, it describes like really clean, really good groove. Like we can, you can feel the pump. It's like, like everything is just clean. Right. And when we do so, none of the sounds sound good at this point. And it's like, it's good if they support the energy of the bass, right? But it, it could be like, uh, it could be otherwise, right? So you can see here, just because we have like leads, chords, pads, now we just don't have so much space between the, the bass, the bass notes. Let's, let's call it like this. Uh, on the other hand here, let's just like imagine that this is gonna be the arrangement. So we have more space for the bass to breathe, right? So again, if I just solo the bass and we have the drums, these sound really, really good, right? It's just... Now the track is super minimal, but it's like, it's, it's vibey. It makes me move like instantly, right? Like if a track makes you move, that's already really, really good. Uh, indicator that you're going in the right direction, right? So let me give you, let me give you an example. So again, take a, take, take a look at this diagram. So it's not always good to have a lot of sounds, right? You, you want to keep like a healthy balance. It's not like that you should have like super empty mix, but also at the same time, do not put too much stuff. And this is like, this is the problem that a lot of people have, like including myself. I like adding, but lately, like, especially I've been focusing on simplicity, minimalism, like all, all that stuff, like all that stuff. So more, more free space, better pump in the track. Super simple. Now imagine if instead of riding the wave, you go in an opposite direction, you just start like adding a lot of sounds. And basically instead of the, uh, instead of the speaker going like back and forth, what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's going to start like, like, you know, this function in LFO, it's called jitter. So basically that's the same thing. So the speaker sort of trying to go back and forth. And especially if you feel with the kick and the bass balance, what's going to happen is, uh, it's just going to try moving 
like back and forth at the same time, but it just can't reproduce this sound, right? So I'll give you an example. Again, let's go back to Ableton, and I have this main main lead sound, and uh, I I made another another pattern here. Uh, even if you just have to like good sounds. <laughs> You can already hear that like it's a little bit harder for the track to breathe although like it still works but i was thinking should i keep the sound or not and i decided that i'm just gonna go with the main lead sound that's it i don't want to layer anything just because it's already sounding good now let me show you this example that this is this is going to be um basically like a representation of what you can see on the diagram so we have the main lead sound which is red and then in this example the green one is the second lead sound that is just going like all over the place <laughs> It's like, it's it's a mess, right? It's it's a mess, like you cannot really understand what is happening. So even if just by looking at like the notes, you can see like, we don't really have any free space, right? But if we do like, like this, now this is the space where the track can breathe. This as well. And you know, we, we have the space between the notes and like, Imagine, imagine if you just have one sound, but what, what's happening quite often is people would have like a, a lot of sounds, right? So like I work with, with, with a lot of people, you know, and what I saw in, in, in projects and some of the stuff that I did, for example, this week, like fixing subscribers track, it's like having too many sounds, it's not, it's not good, right? So the more sounds you have, and if they are put in the wrong way, like you don't arrange them in, in, in the right way. It's just not gonna sound good, right? So, uh, now let's talk about the next problem. So home studio problem. Small speakers are not that sensitive to bass, right? Like what you can see, for example, behind me, like it still can, like it reproduces the bass, but the problem with that is that you won't be able to feel the rumble with the body. And this is what's gonna happen in the club. Like in the club, club system, it will expose all the wrong things you have with your kick in the bass, right? So often what sounded good in my studio sounded horrible in the club, even when I had like a pretty good studio, like, like uh, one and a half years ago. Unless you know that this problem exists, you will be stuck with muddy and weak mixes. I'll show you how to fix it though. So uh, let's do a little experiment, right? So. We're going to listen to the previous mix uh, that I had. Uh, and uh, let me do real phones. Let's do like this. And first, we're going to listen on just like small speakers, just just small speakers. So listen to how it sounds. And it sounds pretty decent. It's like, I wouldn't say it sounds really bad. Uh, like, I know that the track is off, but maybe if you're listening to the track for the first time. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? But once we put it on the big si uh, on the big system, it's like it is lacking that pump. Now I want you to listen to the same thing but I'm gonna do the same thing on my new mix, right? So we're gonna use the same preset. Let's use uh, Music Studio. Let's do like this uh, on mid, mid speakers, right? Same thing, same baseline, but listen to the difference. Right, and then the old one, same thing. Uh, let's listen on. Like it's, it's, it just doesn't work. Right. And that's the thing. Like you're not going to understand fully if your mix will work in a club, unless you have something like that. Like I use this thing all, all the time. It's like my go-to tool uh, for mixing in headphones. Uh, but right. I'll give you one more example so we can listen on this system. And that's going to be like day and night difference again. 
Although, like, you, you can hear the kick, of course, but, like, I tested this mix in the club and it just didn't sound good. Like, it lacks that pump, it lacks that groove, right? So I just didn't pick the right kick and the bass, like, for each other, plus I didn't, like, compress them properly. But then again, the worst thing <laughs> is gonna be the club. So the club will expose everything. Do, let's do like this, nightclub, empty. Like, it's too bassy, it's too boomy, like, I know, like, it, it, it's pretty decent, right? Like, it's, it's, it's still okay, but, like, the difference between the new version, like, it's such a big difference, right? It's, like, tight, punchy. And with all the same instruments, it's just so much more powerful, right? Same thing. Like, if we do in the club, let's do this one. Pump! Like, it makes you move instantly. This one, it, like, doesn't. It's, it's like... It just doesn't work, right? So the problem that I had, again, you can apply this principle to pretty much uh, any sounds, the kick, the bass, the instruments, like everything, right? Everything should work for one um, for one groove, right? Again, if we go back, because I, I, I want to really make sure that you uh, guys understand this. So if you have a wrong kick, uh, for a specific bass, if the lead sound is way, way too long, right? If something is off, like, what's gonna happen instead of this, really minimal, really on point, what's gonna happen is something like this. Like, you have all the sounds going, like, all over the place. So again, the club system. Just imagine how it's gonna sound if dynamics are not managed properly in the track. So, <laughs> what sounded okay in a studio, at home, now in the club, amplify this, like, 10 100 times with this system and <laughs> like it's it's not gonna be groovy right so next thing once you understand this fundamental principle which is like managing dynamics and energy in the track properly everything becomes a lot easier arrangement suddenly is not a problem anymore because like you realistically don't need so much right i'll be making more arrangement videos by the way uh, sound design makes sense because now, like, you understand, like, what exactly you need. And mixing is also easy, right? So how do you control uh, dynamics? And when it comes to controlling dynamics, it's really just, like, three things. Um, maybe, like, four. Uh, envelope, right? So, like, for the synthesizer itself, compression. Uh, and uh, arrangement, right? And one more thing, which I don't want you to forget about, is automation. We'll talk about that. Uh, don't forget about automation. It's very important for controlling dynamics and energy. So when it comes to envelope, like envelope is really like a fundamental thing. Compression, it's more like an addition. Obviously, like you can do a lot, a lot, a lot with compression. And so far, like I've been like getting amazing results lately with compression. Uh, but then again, like arrangement is really the uh, the cornerstone to like it's a foundation. <laughs> so. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples, but I'm not gonna go like too much into the details just to make this video like short and simple, teaching you the big idea. And then I'll be making more videos uh, basically following the idea that I had in this video. So like that's the first step, like understanding. And then the next video is gonna be about like uh, dynamics, compression, automation, like more arrangement videos. So stay tuned. Like I have prepared a lot, a lot of content for you all. So let me give you an example. So let's say we have, um, we have this baseline. Uh, and I want you to take a look with uh, this Sub Ninja oscilloscope. So this is just the bass. This is just the bass and the kick. But now we are going to introduce introduce the lead sound. Uh, take a look at how uh, the waveform behaves. And now with the bass, 
right? So you can see it here. It basically, like, it sits inside this uh, base node. And then if I mess up, if I mess up the uh, envelope, right, the fundamental thing, if I make the release time to... say like it sounds really bad but it can cause you problems too long of release time can cause you problems like it still becomes a little bit too messy because i have this uh a little bass uh, variation right this one and if the lead sound is too too long, basically it just eats up the whole space. And then again, we are we're circling back to uh, how I started the video, right? It was just too much. Good music is simple, especially when it comes to like uh, club music. So here, let me make it shorter, right? I'm gonna make it really short. Let's uh, open the filter. And let's disable all the effects. And we can listen in the club just to show you what I mean. So now like it's pretty nice, it's pretty gro groovy, but once I start, m I start messing up the length of the sound, everything just... Now we, we, we lack the groove, right? So it is really all about like you push and you pull. So you have to ride it. You don't have to, you just don't want to go against the energy. And that, that's that's really the biggest thing that just collects for me like that when I started like playing my stuff more often in the club, right? So that that's, that's really the thing. Uh, and then uh, when it comes to compression, compression is an amazing tool. I'll just show you again, like one uh, really, really cool example. So let's say we have um, uh, this main lead sound and we're going to shorten it a little bit like this. And uh, just listen to how it sounds with this compressor. I have this on the group. And we can make it slightly more aggressive. If I bypass the compressor, pay attention to the oh, pay attention to the sound. So you can now feel that it is not like as groovy because compressor, it helps to change the dynamics of the sound so we can fit it into that energy, right? So we can ride the wave. I'm not going to talk too much about the, uh, the compressor. I just want to kind of give you an example, right? And then uh, one more thing and we're going to... Uh, and the video for today is going to be, again, as I said, uh, automation. So uh, when it comes to automation, what you like essentially want to do is, again, you want to ride that wave, right? So how the bass goes to, like, you just want to emphasize it. You don't want to take away energy. Like, uh, the stuff that you are doing to the track, it either uh, gives takes away from the energy, from the groove, or it adds something to it, right? Sometimes you have to take it, but quite often you want to add, you want to reinforce. So if you take a look at the automation, with automation, I'm also kind of like creating a pattern, a mood for this track. Now let's bypass the filter. It's like I'm emphasizing the energy, right? It's it's like push and pull, push and pull. And I'll be making more videos about that, teaching you all this stuff, guys. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it uh, for this tutorial, really. Uh, so again, that was like a breakthrough moment. Of course, if you're like super experienced guy who has been producing for like decades, like you pretty much know this stuff. But like even I would, I would consider myself like a pro, but... 
this is like a, such a breakthrough moment that I was so, so like excited to share with you all. And I'm gonna elaborate, I'm gonna expand on that. So just uh, take this information and uh, we are gonna wrap this up with uh, the last slide. Questions, questions, really important. So take this information and, uh, oh, what is this? It's, uh, take this information and uh, just di digest it. Digest it, think about it, and it will give you so much. So the last thing, ask these questions when producing. Do I have a defined groove in the track with my baseline? Okay, yes, I have. What elements make up the group? Is it the baseline? Because sometimes it is not the baseline. It could be the chorus, it could be the pad, like what have you. Do all the instruments work for one groove? If no, remove the ones that are not giving something to the track. Do drums reinforce the groove I have in bass and instruments? If yes, cool. If not, no, like change the drums. When adding new sounds, does it really add or take away from the groove? Again, be critical. Can I simplify my arrangement? And like nine out of 10 times you can. So these are just a few examples. Just be more critical and pay attention to the details uh, when you produce. So yeah, that's gonna be it uh, for this video. And uh, wait, wait, the last one. Why do you want to add this sound to the track, right? So when you are being critical and you ask yourself questions, when you are being intentional with uh, like with what you're doing, like when you're producing, it changes the whole game, like trust me. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my new background. This is gonna be my new setup, the lights uh, and everything else. So you have a bit more, uh, a more pleasant <laughs> image of me. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next one.